Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPT Podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So as we begin, if no one has told you today, let me be the first to say thank you. Thank you for what you do. I know that as you are preparing for this exam, it's a stressful moment. It's a stressful time in life. I know there's a lot riding on this, but I want to let you know that I appreciate it. Appreciate what you're doing, not only for yourself, but for your patients down the road. I know that it will be a great benefit and blessing, not just not only to you, but to those you serve for many, many weeks, years, months to come, I know that it'll be a good choice for you. Plus, as a reminder, this is a great intersection between your interests and your skills. So don't ever forget that, that you are good at what you do. Only a very few people are even even qualified to sit for the exam. So even getting to this point, you are, you are clearly uh, the top of the top, the cream of the crop. You are there right at the top. So uh, I want to be there as a part of your journey. So be sure to check out all we have over at ptfinalexam.com to help you get across the finish line. Uh, one of our favorite courses or the courses that many students really enjoy is our crash course. We run a three-week crash course before every test day. So it's done three weeks before any test day. Uh, if you want to get the best discounts, you've got to sign up early for that. So we've got some great discounts, especially for our cohorts. So if you can get a group of your cohort together, you can get some pretty sweet discounts as well. You can find out more about that. Just go to ptfinalexam.com slash contact and you can reach out with your cohort information and we can get you some sweet deals. So the cool part about the crash course is that we go through practice questions each week. So we have two sessions, two live sessions dedicated to practice questions in addition to some pre-recorded content to help, help you see what is not only easily tested but very likely to show up on test day. All for a steal of a deal. I think you'll enjoy that. That is the PT crash course and we have a PTA crash course as well. Uh, you can find all of that information over at ptfinalexam.com. So today we've got a practice question related to one of the new content areas for 2024. So this is for 2024 going onward. The telehealth services or telehealth services, this is something that is going to show up on your exam day. Now, a lot of it will be related to the logistics of telehealth, but some of it will be related to the ethics and professional responsibilities of telehealth. And we will try to reflect that in practice questions for the future as we go through. Uh, so this question is related to telehealth services in and of themselves. So as per usual, I will read to you the question, give you a moment to respond, and then we'll talk about it together. Uh, this certainly telehealth could fit into any of the PT categories as you are trying to, to not only determine what's going on in any of the body system areas, but also in some of the non-system areas. This question today is probably more related to non-systems, professional responsibilities. However, you could see how they could easily write questions related to any of the other body system areas with or that you would perform telehealth services for. So I'll go ahead and read the question for you, give you a moment to respond, and then we'll talk about the answer together. While performing an initial physical therapy visit via telehealth, which of the following steps will be most important to complete first? So while performing an initial physical therapy visit via telehealth, which of the following steps will be most important to complete first? Number one, identify where the patient is physically located. Two, inform the patient of potential limitations of telehealth services. Three, provide informed consent regarding the nature of the encounter and the services rendered. And four, verify the patient's name with photographic identification. So we've got one, identify where the patient is physically located. Two, inform the patient of potential limitations of telehealth services. Three, provide informed consent regarding the nature of the encounter and services rendered. And four, verify the patient's name with photographic identification. All right, so this question asking you about some of the procedures related to, to telehealth. And the answer here is number one, or sorry, option number four, the first step should be to verify the patient's name with photographic identification. So as a part of the, the very first part or the initial part of your PT examination, should be to number one, verify the patient's identification, as well as provide your own identification and credentials so that you and the patient know who you're talking to. So I suppose that is the very first step is to make sure you are talking indeed to the person you expect to be talking to. And obviously telehealth medicine or telehealth services, uh, telemedicine, any, any way you, you look at it, has to be performed electronically, usually via some type of uh, video, or, or really voice communication, something where you are interacting with the patient digitally, not physically. 
So one of the very first steps is you need to identify that you are indeed talking to the person that you think you're talking to. And they need to know that they are talking to who they think they, they want or need to talk to. So again, you'd want to provide your own license information or at least ways to ascertain your license information in addition to the patient's identification as well. So then the second step after you've identified the patient's the, their actual photographic identification. Uh, the second step is you need to identify the patient's physical location. So this is all related to jurisdictions for your PT license. So this is again, pretty clearly a professional responsibilities question in that you need to make sure that you are providing the services in the area in the designated physical location that you are legally able to do so. So this is all related to your license and practice act. So number one, you've identified the patient. Number two, you've identified where the patient is. And then you get into option three and four. Uh, this is where, or items three and four, I should say. This is where you are, uh, number three, providing informed consent. You're telling the patient what you're going to do and getting their ongoing consent for doing so. And so that would be, I'm going to ask you some questions about uh, about your, your history. This will help me understand what exactly is going on with you. Would that be okay if we proceeded? That type of thing. You get that ongoing consent. You can also do it uh, not only verbally, but you can do it in a written format as well. So the patient could check a box or sign something to say, yes, I consent to the treatment. You want to make sure to get good and ongoing informed consent. And finally, the final step of the process is to uh, inform the patient of any potential limitations of telehealth services. So this would be where you'd say, uh, while we are not able to perform any hands-on examination assessment or treatment, we can do some of the subjective information and really get some good baseline data to begin our, our therapeutic intervention via telehealth services. And you can see there's a lot of advantages for telehealth services, especially in the case of like, think about during the pandemic with COVID-19, that it made it so that you could perform interventions without the risk of exposure to, to transmission-based illnesses. So uh, again, there are some certain strong points here, uh, but there are also some limitations and the patient needs to know that. So again, that would be part of the patient's, uh, really your examination, your first visit, uh, first visit communication with the patient. So again, to review the steps, number one, you will identify not only yourself, but also the patient that you're working with. Number two, you're going to clearly understand where the patient is physically located. Uh, number three, you're going to uh, provide informed consent, getting their consent to begin the treatment encounter, to, to describe the, the services and what the encounter will entail. And then the final thing is to make sure to inform the patient of any limitations to telehealth services, such as the inability to perform hands-on examination, assessment, or treatment. So again, you can see this is quite procedural. This would be very much related to your prof professional responsibilities, but telehealth questions could certainly relate to any type of intervention or, or really any, any type of examination or subjective data intake that you would be performing with the patient. Uh, of note, it's interesting that with telehealth services, not only one of the benefits are that you get to avoid transmission-based illnesses and it can make it more, make it easier for the for the therapist to provide care, especially in remote destinations. Uh, one of the other benefits that, that I've seen is that the patient can have, have better, what is it? It's better, uh, better interaction, not interaction, but the better compliance with the plan of care. This would be like home exercise programs. You could see how with frequent telehealth follow-up, you could get good, good participation in any of your home exercise programs or compliance with the plan of care. Now, the big downside, obviously, is the lack of hands-on examination, assessment, or treatment. So, and that's a, a big part of this whole, uh, the, the whole process of telemedicine is to make sure that you are not only performing it well, but also providing information for the patient to make decisions based on what's going on. So, again, that's where you get informed consent and then advise the patient of any potential limitations that there may be. All right, so there you go. There's a question on telehealth. Again, that's one of the new content areas that has been added for the 2024 administration and beyond. You'll certainly want to be familiar with telehealth and telemedicine as it regards as it as it relates to physical therapy intervention, examination, uh, assessment, all of that. Uh, certainly, we'll be adding more and more of these questions as they become available. This is one of those things where. Uh, up until 2024, they've not included these on the actual NPT, but we can expect them to come on the NPT going forward. 
So again, we'll be we'll be posting as many of these as possible. I'll probably get some more cheat sheets and tri- tricks and tips over on our ptfinalexam.com slash podcast freebies. So be sure to check that out as well. All right, so we'll bring it to a conclusion today. Again, thank you so much for taking the time to spend with me as we go through these practice questions. If you haven't yet, it really only takes a moment on Google Play, iTunes, Spotify, wherever it is you're listening to this, just go ahead and give us a five-star review. Really helps. We're trying to not only disseminate this podcast, but help people pass the NPTE. So give us a help. Give us a hand there as uh, give us a help. <laughs> take, take good care of us as we go through this. And uh, yeah, keep a grin on your chin as you're going through your studies. Make sure that you are taking good care of yourself, generally speaking. And I'll catch you in the next episode. Thanks, everyone.